The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya is one of those early anime that everyone collectively decided was worth watching, like Death Note, or Cowboy Bebop, or Bible Black. A decision that seems confusing and arbitrary until you realize that this came out in 2007, at the peak of low random XD internet culture. So I have to preface this video by saying I look back on that time with fondness, spending a large amount of my adolescent years making internet friends in deviant art chat rooms with teenage girls who all used Invader Zim OCs as profile pictures and celebrated with to lulls about how random they were, and my best internet friend called herself randomness and together with some of these pioneering e-girls, we created an internet club called the Random P Oh my god, this is so humiliating. So when you realize that the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya about this random XD girl who wears a random hairstyle every day of the week and chooses a bunch of random people to join her random club and do random things in every episode of the anime aired in a random order, basically is lol random xd internet culture the animation, it's not at all hard to see why this took off. The thing about the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya is that, despite being a Japanese show about Japanese high schoolers, it almost seems like a subversion of the entire lol random identity that took off in the West. Haruhi, who stands out from everyone else by being this quirky and random e-girl, is, in reality, nothing more than an ordinary high schooler. Haruhi is this godlike entity with the power to wish anything into existence, and so being disillusioned with everyday life, wishes the supernatural into being. She goes around and collects a time traveler, an alien, and an esper, and together forms a club to seek out the extraordinary. And having done that, how does Haruhi spend all of her time? What does this quirky girl do with all of these extraordinary people in the club she created to seek out the extraordinary, to be extraordinary? They write wishes for Tanabata, they enter a baseball tournament, they make a website and play video games, they go swimming at the beach, they make a shitty movie with a cheap camcorder, they have a Christmas party. Literally, none of these things are random or even the slightest bit out of the ordinary at all. They're just completely normal activities for Japanese high schoolers. <laughs> Even the baseball game where they cheat with psychic powers to win, what do they do once they've won? They forfeit. They forfeit because none of this ever had any real meaning. It was just a way for a bunch of bored high schoolers to pass the time, like high schoolers do. Take even a small step back from the story and Haruhi's goofiness, and all you'll find is the ordinary. <laughs> In episode 5, we get to see Haruhi's story of her as a little girl, gazing upon the outline of thousands and thousands of people at this baseball game and feeling cold and empty as she suddenly realizes how tiny and insignificant she is in the world and wakes up to the utter meaninglessness of the universe. And this sense of isolation, of growing up and discovering your place in the world, only to find yourself tiny and insignificant, that is the center of her quirkiness, of her lol random XD personality. The center of THE lol random XD personality. The sudden ejection of the internet into mainstream culture suddenly gave this new generation of kids a new and unique perspective on the nauseating scale of the world and the suffocating insignificance of existing in the universe. So is it any surprise? that hordes of kids all collectively reacted by trying to preserve their individuality by facing the source of this isolation, the internet, and deciding to be quirky and unique and random. In exactly the same way as everyone else, of course. This is an irony that seems a little bit too lost on everyone who participated in this embarrassing and short-lived bit of internet culture, myself included, but it for sure wasn't to this anime, and I think that is the reason the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya stood head and shoulders above every other anime in 2007. Even when no one understood what was going on, when no one understood their own feelings and anxieties about the world, this anime did. This story of this quirky, weird, random, ordinary girl just trying to find the fun in the world perfectly captures everything about the onset of the internet. That's why I think everyone watched, why everyone loved the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, despite not being an obvious and timeless classic like Death Note or Cowboy Bebop or Bible Black. It was, and still is, very, very, very relatable. And so we see that despite what she says, what she wanted never was the extraordinary. She just wanted to feel special. Seeking out the supernatural was just her own way of dealing with this thought. 
This is why Haruhi doesn't so much go around trying to be weird as she does go around trying to be in charge. She's the club leader, sorry, brigade leader. She's the pitcher, the esports captain, the movie director, the pop star. What does she say after her performance at the culture festival? <laughs> Standing there singing and playing music to a gymnasium filled with people all cheering and shouting her name, being not just one silhouette among thousands in an incalculable crowd of people, but the person the crowd is gathered there for, to not stand among, but to be surrounded by, to be validated by all of these people. That is what she wanted. She never wanted the supernatural. All she ever wanted was to be noticed, for people to look upon her life and tell her that it's worth something. And doesn't that just seem familiar? So the story never actually explains why Haruhi has these powers or where it comes from, and I think that's because it's not important. I see it as a metaphor for this feeling of waking up to the insignificance of existence, for the feeling of being utterly and truly ordinary. We're all the same, but that doesn't mean our lives can't be or aren't extraordinary. It's only a matter of perspective. Nothing that she really does is extraordinary, but it's she herself that makes it so. And I think this is the point of Kyon's character. While Haruhi is a normal girl wishing for the extraordinary but really desiring the everyday, Kyon is someone who spends every day wishing for peace and quiet, but what he really wants is the unusual. And the question Kion keeps asking is why him? And the answer is because he's exactly her opposite, and so enables Haruhi while bringing stability and normalcy to her life. What Kion shows Haruhi is the beauty of the everyday. She spends so much time trying to escape the cold and boring tedium of the ordinary, and here he's showing her that the most extraordinary thing about them is how normal it all is. <laughs> What Kion is able to give her is perspective. Sure, there's trivial, boring things about everyday life, but there's fun and meaning to be had too, and that's what she really wants. There's two general camps about this show, one that it's really artsy and out there, and one that it's obtuse and confusing and that people only like it because they think it's quirky and random. And yet again, we look out on the masses of weeaboos and we find that the only one who truly understands anime is me. King of Weeaboos. The story isn't that weird or complicated. That's exactly the point. At the heart of the show is just a bunch of ordinary high schoolers hanging out. And so to discuss this, we need to move on to the second set of camps around this show, which is the never-ending debate on watch order. If you're somehow not familiar, this show aired out of order, and every re-release since then has rearranged it to somewhat air in chronological order. If we mosey on over to the Wikipedia, Wikipedia page, you'll find not two, not three, not four, but five different official watch orders, one for every single time this anime has been released. And then dig deeper and you'll find weebs coming up with their own watch orders, trying to combine the original and chronological order and- Stop! 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 What are you doing? You don't even know why you're doing this. There's just so much wrong with this. The fact that the watch order is even a debate. The fact that not just the fans, but the official re-releases rearranged it. All this time spent on trying to figure out the correct order to watch a fucking TV show. And not once did I see anyone even ask the basic question of if any of this idiotic discussion is even necessary. It's not. Yes, this is why we need me. Here's the thing, friends. The melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya is not confusing. It never was. Each episode just shares a small slice of the life of Haruhi and her friends. Almost none of the episodes need knowledge of any of the others. You could watch this anime in basically any order and it would still make just as much sense. 
In fact, the only episodes that need to be connected are the island episodes and the ending too, and both sets were aired in chronological order because otherwise that would be confusing, which is why that didn't happen. And judging how everything is supposed to be paced and how the original ending episode feels like an ending, I'm pretty sure it wasn't written and then rearranged later, but instead written as a cohesive story and then merely had the order each episode takes place in rearranged. The only thing that might actually confuse you is literally just the question of why is this not being aired in chronological order? Not anything to do with the reordering, not the actual order of the episodes, literally just the concept of not airing in chronological order is the only thing about it that's actually confusing. So if you're able to get past that, I guarantee you that it's not going to be confusing. In fact, I would even argue that airing in chronological order is more confusing. In chronological order, the actually complicated shit all happens relatively early instead of at the end like it was originally shown, and the chronologically last episode is just not an ending? I swear, they just ran out of budget and shoehorned in three full fucking minutes, and I counted of Nagato just sitting in the club room with sports club sounds coming from the outside into a random episode in the middle of the show. And so to put this episode last is just, how do you say? completely fucked. Basically, the original presents a coherent story that just happens to be told in a slightly confusing manner, whereas the chronological rearrangement feels like a bunch of shit happening in a random order. I will concede that the first episode, the movie episode, should have maybe not be the first episode. I mean, I kind of get it. The movie lays out the themes and the overall plot, but also it's just really, really obtuse to the point where literally none of it will mean anything to you if this is your first encounter with the story. And this would be fine if it were really good, but it's actually not supposed to be good. It's supposed to be really, really shitty. And obviously there's an ironic appeal to something that's deliberately shitty, but the problem with this is that it just drags on and on and on. If it were like, say, five minutes, this would be a perfect introduction to the show. But, uh, it's not. It's the whole first episode. It's way too long for what it is. It's funny, but it's not that funny. The best part of this is the song, which is actually kind of catchy, but it only lasts a minute and a half, and then the episode just goes downhill from there. And the weird thing is, all of the alternative watch orders I was talking about earlier involve watching this first and everything else in chronological order. Uh, what? That's literally backwards. This is like the one episode that does feel confusing in the original broadcast order, and so you're making the show worse to be slightly more approachable, and then you're putting this first? What the fuck, bro? My recommendation is- Oh my god, I was just about to give another watch order. Wait. Wait. No. No, I'm the king of weeaboos. I'm literally smarter than everyone else. This- this is definitely worth talking about. Okay, so my recommendation is basically the original broadcast order, except watch the movie episode with the rest of the school festival episodes and- Wait, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh yeah, right. The reason most people will just tell you to watch it in chronological order is because it has been legitimized not just by the re-releases, but by the existence of season two, which is not really a second season, but a bunch of extra episodes they made so they could sell this show again. And because you can't just fit them in, people say watch this ordering for the full experience. Hmm? What's that? No, you couldn't just watch them after the original like a sequel. Then that would be out of order, idiots. There is, however, one other little thing that throws a wrench into this, which is why I'm about to share with you my watch order, and that's that season 2 fucking sucks. And I don't just mean the 8 episodes that are literally the same episode repeated 8 fucking times, though that's part of it. Basically, all of it sucks. Let's start with the obvious part though. See, there's these 8 episodes called the Endless 8 arc, where Haruhi creates a time loop where they just repeat the same events 15,000 times until Kion can finally break the cycle. And they're not bad? And in fact, each of them has different ideas, different pacing, different perspective, and a different message to share about Haruhi and the world, which keeps it fresh and interesting, or at least so I thought when I started, but after the third repeat, they apparently ran out of new angles to take it because it just starts repeating the same identical shit and almost drove me insane. I have a hunch there's eight because they wanted season two to have the same number of episodes as the original, so they just kept adding in a new loop until they had 14, which is irritating just thinking about 
how anyone thought this was even remotely a good idea. The general consensus is to watch it until you start to get bored and then just skip to the end, but this assumes this part is worth watching in the first place, which it's not. Again, almost none of season 2 is. The problem with season 2 is the same problem that plagues all sequels that only exist by virtue of the popularity of the original. The melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya was written as a complete story, so where do you even start? You could try to write a sequel to a story that very much does not need a sequel and run the risk of undermining the original, like Steins Gate Zero, or you could take the approach they went with here and try to expand on the story with the risk of making it boring. And the issue with this approach is that the beginning and end of the this story is already decided, so all you can do is fill in the gaps a little. So the story, by nature, cannot go anywhere new or important. And so these eight episodes are all just building up to this one big non-existent payoff that comes out in one sad anticlimactic fart, and then just moves on to the next episode without any lingering thought. It's just Haruhi being able to see something she hadn't before by working with her friends, but this is basically the scene from the concert episode. <laughs> Only kind of worse because however many repeats you've sat through before coming to this, you've already stopped fucking caring. And because the plot can't go anywhere, and because the characters are so one-dimensional, everything that happens in season 2 is just so inconsequential. The rest of it is just the making of the movie, you know, the deliberately shitty episodes starring shallow characters who just flap around on camera for 20 minutes? Yeah, that over 5 episodes. Hmm, an unnecessarily drawn out and boring episode being stretched out over 5. If you said that sounds terrible, You'd be right. Kion and Haruhi are the only characters with any real depth, but because Kion is reliant on Haruhi, and because Haruhi's character can't actually go anywhere, we're just left with this completely one-dimensional version of Haruhi being paraded around on camera for 14 episodes. The only episode in season 2 that might be worth watching is the one standalone episode which functions as kind of a bridge to the movie. It has Kion go back in time with a different version of Mikuru, where he meets a younger Haruhi, and oh look, we added new dimensions to the characters, and suddenly they're interesting again. Weird how that works. Ha! Huh. Bet we could learn something from this if we weren't bad anime writers. So I guess it's time to go back to my watch order. I've come up with this handy spreadsheet to illustrate this. Making this was probably not a waste of time. Basically, the broadcast order, but with the movie episode and the bridge episode in more sensible places. And with this, I hope I have once again solidified my position as king of weeaboos, bringing enlightenment to the unwashed masses, please like and subscribe. If you require more enlightenment, and you probably do, I recommend you watch my recent video explaining the philosophy of and basically every single literary reference that went into Psychopaths. And if you for some reason have not seen Psychopaths recently, or dear god, not at all, friendly reminder that it is one of the best anime ever made, and one of the very few you can show to your non weeb friends or your cooler relatives. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for your time, friends, and I will see you in the next video.